want you to grab your Bibles tonight or somebody's Bible next to you. Just feel free tonight. <laughs> Just be free in it. Go to Daniel chapter 2 if you would. Daniel chapter 2. Cody, thank you so much. I could sing that the rest of the night till the sun comes up tomorrow. Daniel 2 tonight, before we, before we dive into the word, I want to say uh, just really some special words of honor. There's, there's two men in the room tonight specifically that, that we want to honor um, that have had tremendous birthdays. The first one is Shane Tenney. Shane. <laughs> Come on, give him a huge God bless you. Come on. Shane turned 55. Praise God. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> okay. Shane, happy birthday. Um, we've loved on you in private, and, and, uh, but I want to say it publicly. We're just so grateful how the Holy Spirit led you and Janique to victory and how he bonded your heart to us, bonded our hearts to you. It's a God thing. It's a complete God thing. It's such a miracle. And we're just so grateful for you, the gift of God that you are to this house, to our lives. We love you and we honor you. And may this brand new year just be saturated with the glory of our Father, the goodness of God. You're a real man of God, Shane. We love you. We honor you in this house. We bless you. Come on, let's wish him happy birthday tonight. <clears throat> Well, secondly, there's, a, there's another man in here tonight, and he's been in our lives for 24 years tonight, and that's Josiah Gibbs. I want you to give him a big God bless you tonight. And Josiah, we love you so, so deeply, so very much, and so thankful for your life and what you mean to your mother and I and to this body and this church, the gift of God that you are and the gift of God that he's making you to be. And uh, we just delight in you. We're so grateful for you, honor you, and love you. So happiest of birthdays, Josiah David. Love you with all my heart. Come on, let's give him a huge God bless you. Come on. It's hard to believe it's been 24 years tonight, honey. That's amazing. Tonight. <laughs> Amen. Look forward to getting out afterwards and celebrating tonight too, Josiah. Amen. Daniel 2, are you there tonight? Oh, it didn't sound like anybody turned any pages and nobody's, everybody's trusting the screens tonight, I guess. Is anybody in Daniel 2? Oh, there's a couple... Okay, there, okay, oh, wow, there's a lot of Bibles on this side. Can I see your Bible or your iPad tonight? That, actually, that looks awesome. I'd like to take a picture of that, a little selfie moment for, <laughs> hold your Bibles up, come on. <laughs> Amen. I want to do something before we dive in. Um, I want to invite you to Victory's prayer room. Um, it's a mile from here. It's at the corner of Honoré and 17th where our Victory prayer room is, and, of course, the expansion of our sanctuary is taking place there right now. Um, we, uh, in the last couple weeks, uh, just to be very candid and very honest with you, uh, we have been encountering God in the prayer room in a very, very holy and special way. Um, it's been a very personal way. Uh, many of us have just been so overwhelmed and overcome by the Spirit of God. Uh, it's hard to describe there's been times of just thunderous faith in the room and power and declarations and all of that. But then there's been times of tenderness and brokenness where the Spirit of God is just moving in such a way and uh, overcoming our team. And this is exactly what we need. This is exactly what we need. We need a saturation of the Spirit of God. And the Lord has been coming in a, in a very, very special, special way. 
And um, I want to invite you out. I want to encourage you to get to the prayer room this week. Of course, our our schedule is on the app. It's on the website. So avail yourself to that. Join us in the prayer room and encounter the Lord and minister to him. And let him teach you how to pray in this hour. Amen. That's our prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray now, Lord, and teach us to be effective and teach us to move with you. And so I just want to honor the Holy Spirit and what he's doing amongst us. And uh, personally, I have been so overcome by the Holy Ghost in our prayer room. It's, it's been awesome. And then as Bryn said, on Wednesday nights, beginning July 10th, we're believing our, uh, we're believing, we're beginning, we're beginning our discipleship and training night on July 10th, Wednesday nights. You want to join us, a time of teaching, a time of devotion. It's going to be, I think they're just going to be tremendous. And so join us there. Daniel chapter uh, chapter 2 tonight. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, for this night. We thank you for the privilege always and the freedom to come to the house of the Lord to worship. And we thank you for the family of God. And we thank you for the privilege of coming and gathering as one. But Lord, above all, we are so grateful you are here. You are amongst us, Lord. And may your word tonight be rich. May your word be engrafted and sown into us, Lord, and change us, Lord. Transform us through the power of your word and the anointing that comes through your word. Lord, let your anointing flow like a river. May it be like a river of fire tonight, Lord, as Daniel saw the river of fire that ushers forth from your throne. Let that river flow tonight And, Lord, may you give us a spirit of revelation and wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm in Daniel chapter 2, and I I believe the Holy Spirit is summoning us right now. He's issuing a special invitation for us to encounter him, to bring us into personal revival and into national awakening. And we're not going to let go of that. Although many are letting go right now, we absolutely refuse to let go of that. Can I get a witness in here? There is fresh oil being poured out and the Holy Spirit is summoning us because he is preparing and building overcomers. The Lord is building you into an overcomer. Take this personal tonight. The Lord is building you into an overcomer now. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to be a messenger from the Lord tonight. Um, I'm not a cheerleader. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I'm not a cheerleader, but I am a voice and I am a messenger. And um, oftentimes I, I talk to the church about concerning the times and what time it really is and where we're going. And <clears throat> God is, I believe God on the ecclesia is releasing a fresh oil and an anointing for this phase that we're moving into in the earth, in this present season for overcoming. There's an anointing for overcoming in this hour. We've got to tap into it and drink of it every day and receive. Are you with me tonight? Um, so speaking tonight to the times and the seasons, we're We're in Daniel chapter 2, and Daniel, of course, he's in Babylonian captivity. King Nebuchadnezzar, he's he's being tormented in his sleep, in his dreams. He's getting no rest. He's getting no sleep. And so now he's furious. He's enraged, and he's inquiring of, of everyone that he has on his squad and his team to give him some level of discernment of what is going on. And But Daniel goes to him, and by the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit moves upon Daniel because Daniel has a spirit of wisdom. Daniel has a spirit of revelation that is resting upon him. And so he goes to Nebuchadnezzar to minister to him. And I want to grab several things out of the book of Daniel tonight. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 20, he answers unto him and he says, Blessed be the name of God. Forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. 
He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. Read it with me again. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. Somebody say wisdom is the Lord's. Say it tonight. Wisdom is the Lord's. That's right. And might is his. And he changes. This is what God does. This is Daniel talks, he's talking about the nature of God, the very character of God. God is the one who changes times. He's the one who changes seasons. He removes kings, raises them up. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. If you want to jump over, you can go with me now to Daniel chapter 7. And I want to just point out something about the nature of the enemy and what he tries to do. How many of you know when when Jesus was teaching in Mark chapter 4 that he says part of the nature of the enemy, he's a thief. The enemy comes, Jesus says the, the enemy comes immediately to steal the seed of the Word of God that has been sown. Are you tracking with me? This is Mark chapter 4. He says part of what you need to understand is that the enemy comes to steal the Word, and it's not because we are so powerful. It's because the Word of God is so powerful and incorruptible. Are you hearing me? And so he works very craftily and very hard to steal or snatch the Word of God out of individuals' lives or out of the church's life. Are you with me? So Daniel chapter 7, this is interesting. Concerning the enemy, he says, He will speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend, watch this, and shall intend to change times and laws, and then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half a time. Now that is speaking of the great tribulation. When he says time, that's speaking prophetically of a year. Times would be two years. A half a time would be a half a year. So when we're dealing, we're not going to go into the depths of this tonight because I've got a stream of, of, of a message that I've got to stay faithful to tonight. But when you study the book of Revelation, what you find out is, or excuse me, the book of Daniel, he begins to talk about the unveiling of the end of times when the scrolls are being released and opened. And he begins to share with us about Daniel's 70th week that is about to come. That 70th week is a seven-year period. But in this seven-year uh, seven period, the, th- the last three years of it, that time and times and a half a time, is what we know to be the great tribulation that shall come upon the whole earth. But watch this. Read the next verse with us. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion. Can I get an amen? The court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion, meaning the devil's time is short. The time of the Antichrist rule is very, very short on planet earth before his power and dominion is taken to consume and destroy it forever. And then the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole earth shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. The kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey it. Can I get a witness tonight? So it says the enemy will speak pompous things. He will persecute. Now this is, this is the very nature of what the enemy does at all times. He is He is trying to do something specific, and here's my point tonight. The enemy is always trying to disrupt or superimpose or supplant or replace and steal a time or a season. How many of you are aware of the tactics of the enemy? Are you how many of you are aware of the tactics of the enemy? The enemy is always trying to come to superimpose. He's always trying to move in 
and readjust and superimpose or replace and interject into what God has in, intended in a life or in a city or in a nation or in a people. Are you with me? I, I just want, I, I want to give a natural observation tonight. Think about right now what has happened or what was stolen from the United States of America since 2020 and where we have been and what was in, imported or imposed upon us or supplanted upon us that would bottom out or gut this nation to take us into a globalist agenda and a globalist movement. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want you to see that picture. But I also believe that God is able to deliver us from evil. And that nothing is impossible with our God. Amazing to me that there's a lot of Christians, and I, I, don't, uh, I don't understand this, but there's a lot of Christians that they believe it really doesn't even matter uh, who's in the White House. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's in the Senate. It doesn't matter who's in the Supreme Court. It doesn't matter who our judges are. It doesn't matter who our, our governors are or those that lead this nation because to them, they're just stuck on a religious platitude. They think that they can camp there and they're okay. They think that they can camp on religious platitudes and being lazy. You know why? Because God is just in control. And so it really just doesn't matter who's in the White House or who is leading. Can I tell you that's the stupidest thing we could ever communicate? It's true. God needs righteous leaders. He needs righteous men to rise up. He needs righteous men to rise up. He needs righteous women to rise up. He needs you in this hour. He needs me. He needs you in this hour. I want you to declare something with your heart tonight. As for me and my house. Come on, declare it. As for me and my house. Come on, as for me and my house, in the details of my life, Satan does not set the times. He does not set the seasons, but the Lord God sets my seasons. The Lord God sets my times. The enemy has no access to my family. Come on, he has no access to my family. Hallelujah. He has no access and authority over my life. God sets my times and seasons. Come on, somebody shout the victory tonight. The church as a whole, and I want you to flip back, if you would, to Daniel 7 once again, because I want to look at a few more things. But the church as a whole right now is in a time of exposure. And God is dealing with sin right now, and properly so. And I say that in the fear of the Lord. God is dealing with sin in the church, and properly so. It's so disappointing. It's so heartbreaking what we are seeing in the body of Christ right now, but it is necessary. And why is it necessary? Because God is very serious about making sure Jesus will have a bride that is pure for him. He's making sure his son will have a pure bride. The Word of God says that our God, he is a consuming fire. He is torching all that must go. Hear this tonight. The Lord is torching everything that must go. The Lord doesn't just need to touch us. He needs to torch us. Everything that must go, it must go now. The Lord's very serious about it. I'm saying this in the fear of the Lord. It is so heartbreaking seeing what is going on in the body of Christ. That's why you must cling to God with all that you are in this hour. We've got to be a people who we long to live holy before God. 
And we don't want to grieve His precious Holy Spirit. We don't want to quench the Spirit of God. Amen? But not only is the church in a time of exposure, the church is in a moment, I believe, of its highest levels of decision. And the decision that I, I believe that is on the line is, will the church actually retreat and cower down into obscurity because of fear? Or will the church actually boldly overcome and begin to win the victories over the workers of darkness? I know who we are. I know who we are. I know who this tribe is. God is making us hungry for victory. God is making us hungry for triumph. You put this in your notes. I don't believe I gave it to our team, but in Philippians chapter 1, verse 28, it says, in no way are we to be terrified of our adversaries. Did you hear that? In no way. In no way are we to be terrified of our adversaries. See, the Spirit of God is calling, and the Spirit of God is freshly anointing overcomers right now. Maybe you need to go back this week in Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3 and read the call of Jesus once again to the church to be overcomers. Chapter 2, chapter 3, book of Revelation, is the voice of Jesus thundering and rebuking the church in love. Rebuking and calling the church unto Himself. Telling us what He is not pleased with and what He cannot just... The Lord's not going to wink at these things. God is an all-consuming fire. But yet He calls us to a place and says, I desire and long for you to be an overcomer. I have called you to be like my son, who is the ultimate overcomer. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter 4, I want you to go with me there and hold your place there. Hold your place there, because I just realized I'm in Daniel 7. (laughs) And I don't want to miss what I was going to grab hold of in Daniel 7. I'm going to read beginning in verse 9. It says, I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame. Look at that. Look at that. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. So the, the throne of the, of the Lord has these burning wheels. The throne of the Lord is of fire. And then watch this, it says, a fiery stream issued, meaning there was a river that came out forth from the throne of God. It was a burning, fiery stream that came out from before the Lord. And thousands of thousands ministered to him. Tens of thousands times ten thousand stood before him. And watch these words. The court was seated and the books were open. Folks, if there is a court in heaven, you must know there is righteous judgment that the Lord is going to measure out. Because the very foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice. Verse 13, I watched, this is Daniel, I watched in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom is one which shall not be destroyed. Glory to God. You can shout tonight. Verse 18, but the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Oh, my Lord. I want you to see authority. I want you to see authority. I want you to see power. 
I want you to see what, what Daniel was talking about. The power and the majesty of the throne of the Lord Jesus. The ancient of days upon His throne. His dominion. His power. His supremacy. And that we must know that the end of the story is this. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I are about ready to inherit a kingdom that will never know an end. <sighs> Glory to God. First Peter chapter 4, are you there? <laughs> Good. The Apostle Peter writes these words by the Holy Spirit. He says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Look at that. Don't think it's strange by the fiery trial, which is to try you as though there's something strange that's happening to you. He's saying just don't be bewildered by it. Don't be caught by surprise. Don't, don't be shocked by it. Don't be overwhelmed by the fiery trial. But understand and discern what is actually happening. That in this fiery trial, God is actually shaping and forging and making you and I into a mighty overcomer. Just as Jesus overcame the works of darkness, just as Jesus overcame evil, just as Jesus overcame every devil and spirit of fear, so we must. Rejoice to this uh, extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings, and when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy if you are reproached for the name of Christ. Blessed are you for the spirit of glory and God rest on you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. Oh, my Lord. We're going to use a lot of the Bible tonight. We make no apologies for using the Bible at victory. Can I get a witness? We've got to see this tonight because God is shaping, God is forging his people in this hour. He is crafting and making men and women of God. As I've said to you before, you are putting on spiritual weight. When you are on, don't be afraid of that. You're putting on spiritual weight. Did you hear me? You're putting on spiritual weight. It's okay. The Lord wants to forge you. He wants to put on spiritual muscle on you so that you can bear up under the weight and the gravity of this hour that you are able to wage a good warfare and use the sword of your spirit, of the spirit. Are you with me? And so I've been reading portions of Daniel this week. I've been studying different portions of it. And I went back to Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, these three Jewish boys, captive in Babylon. These guys were bold as lions. You remember them? They were bold as lions. They refused to bow down and worship the image of gold. And tonight I'm picking it up in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 17. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. This is, they're talking to Nebuchadnezzar here. Our God's able to deliver us from your hand, O king. But watch these words, verse 18. But if not, if not, just let it be known to you, O king, we do not serve your gods. We do not serve your gods. We will not worship the golden image which you have set up. So Nebuchadnezzar, now he's enraged, he's incensed, he's in fury. He's threatening them. They have denied him. Now the furnace is being turned up even hotter. Verse 19, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed. Oh, I bet his face did change. Towards Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. And he spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Verse 20, and he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were with his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men, they were bound in their coats and in their trousers and in their turbans and in other garments. They were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, 
and the furnace exceedingly hot. The flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, oh, there's their name again, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, fell down bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And then King Nebuchadnezzar, he was astonished. And he rose in haste, and he spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they said, oh, Well, yes, king, oh, that's true. Verse 25, don't miss it tonight. Look, look. He answered, I see four men loosed walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. I see them walking. I see them walking in the midst of the fire. I see them walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. These guys could tell you exactly what it's like to go through the fire. And we need resolve. We need resolve and boldness in this hour. We need the fear of the Lord in us for this time and this hour. To understand, folks, we cannot bow down to any form of manipulation or intimidation of the enemy. We can't bow down to the corruption of this age or the, the spirit of this age. We can't, we can't cower down or bow down to this false unity that churches are folding into right now. This false unity of the rainbow movement that churches are just plummeting into to placate the spirit of this age. Are you hearing me? We cannot bow down to it. We cannot bow down to this wicked government right now that is legislating, legislating corruption, legislating wickedness, legislating perversion, legislating corruption. We cannot bow down to it. I will not bow down to it. Friend, everybody's being tested right now. Let me look right at you and tell you, everybody's being tested right now. I, I am watching men of God fold and bow down to the spirit of this age. And it's absolutely shocking to me. It's shocking that those that once feared the Lord are now folding to this spirit. They're willing to bow down and worship God. Whatever you want to label the golden image of this hour. They've retreated. They've went backwards. That must never be our story. It must never be our story. We've got to stand up strong no matter the cost. I want to be willing to stand with Jesus all the way through. I want to fight this good fight. I want to finish strong. I want to stand with Jesus all the way through. I want to stand on the word all the way through. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants, look at that, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the midst of the fire, and the set traps and the administrators and governors and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power, no power. The hair on their head was not singed, nor were their garments even affected. The smell of the fire was not on them. That's our God. That's King Jesus. That's King Jesus. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who sent his angel and delivered his servant, who trusted in him, and they have frustrated <laughs> the king's words and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. 
that any people, nation, and language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut to pieces. And their house shall be made as an ash heap because, watch these words, there is no other God who can deliver like this. Hallelujah! There's no other God who can deliver like this. How many of you know who General George Patton is? So many of you. He was a general in the United States Army. He commanded the 7th Army in the Mediterranean theater of World War II. Also the 3rd Army in France and in Germany and after the Allied invasion of Normandy in June of 1944. These are the words of General George Patton. He said, battle is the most magnificent competition in which a human being can indulge. Listen, battle is the most magnificent competition in which a human can indulge. It brings out the best in us and removes all that is base. All men are afraid of battle. The coward is the one who lets his fear overcome his sense of duty. Those are powerful words. The coward is the one who lets his fear overcome his sense of duty. Duty is the essence of manhood, end quote. General George Patton. There are days of fiery trial. We've already went through many of them, but there are more that are ahead. I have good news for you. God is preparing his church for the hour that's ahead. God is preparing and building overcomers. Now is the time. We're not cowering back. We are about to surge forward like never before. 2 Timothy chapter 3, something that I interject into messages all the time because you don't hear this in churches. You hear a lot of fluff. You hear a lot of Dr. Feelgood's preaching good, feel-good messages and a lot of fluff. But you've got to understand, folks, even though we are the children of God, we are also the army of God. And this is what he says in verse 3. He says, you therefore, you must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that it may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Again, we have to endure hardship as a good soldier. It's difficult. Days ahead are going to be difficult but there is an anointing from the Spirit of God that will carry us. There is an anointing within you. There's an abiding of the Spirit of God. There is an anointing in you. There is an oil in you. There is a fire in you. There is a word in you that will keep burning. And your high priest, Jesus himself, he will keep you burning in this hour. The battles rage every day. We have to be sober. We have to be full of faith. God has set us here in this hour to be victorious. That's why you're here. He set you here to be victorious. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 6. I remind you guys, we are an army, and that's why we are instructed to put on the full armor of God. Finally, brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against all the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, right? But against principalities, against powers, against rulers of this dark age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able, watch this, to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Arm yourself with the Word. And praying always in prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Be watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all 
of the saints. Wow. This above here, what we've just read, this is for all soldiers right now enlisted in the kingdom of God. And until the glorious appearing of King Jesus, when he comes to destroy every power of the enemy, God has called you and I to wage warfare and fight and resist every form of evil on this earth. Can I get a witness? 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. Use your Bible tonight. It's good. Eat it. Let's eat it tonight. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. What is it? It is our faith. It is our faith. Paul writes to us in, in 2 Corinthians, he says, the weapons of our warfare, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What's he saying? It fights against the very nature of Satan. Our weapons, are they have the ability, the supernatural ability and power to, ver to pull down the very nature of Satan himself. Bringing in every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We're engaged in a battle. We're engaged in an epic battle that God has called us and clothed us to win. Put on the full armor of God every day. Put on the full armor of God and do not retreat, but engage in this battle. For God has called you to win. God's called us to win. I'm hungry to win. I'm hungry to win. Many of you remember the story of Eleazar, how Eleazar in the Scripture, he's fought so valiantly that after him waging warfare, his very hands clung to his sword. His hands had to be peeled off, finger by finger, off of his sword because he waged such a powerful warfare. I love that picture. So take us back. Peter says, listen, don't be overwhelmed. Don't be distressed. Don't be freaked out, worrying because you see, you're going through fiery trials. I'm not even going to ask who's going through fire, fiery trials because every hand in this place would go up. It's true. But don't think it's strange that you're going through fiery trials. Don't think it's strange. Be encouraged by the Spirit of God tonight. This is what Jesus said to encourage us in Matthew chapter 5. Put it in your notes tonight. Jesus gave us these words. He said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. For righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you are reviled, and they, they persecute you. They say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. For my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Before you. Keep this in mind, folks. When you're going through trials, when you're going through persecution, when you are being reviled, the promise of the Lord stands. The promise of the Lord is true. Be exceedingly glad. Guys, great is your reward in heaven. Did you see those words? I want to say them over you again. Great is your reward in heaven. In heaven. Your eternal reward. You know, Jesus Christ is my eternal reward. There isn't anything on this earth that I'm doing this for. There isn't anything on this earth that I'm doing this for. I'm doing this for the reward of my King Jesus himself. Our reward is in heaven. Romans chapter 5. This is what Paul says to encourage us, beginning in verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have access by faith in this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory, this is, this is wild, this will take the renewing of the mind for sure, we glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation is producing something. Notice that. See, 
but step away from here. God's building you, building you. He's putting on spiritual weight on you. He's putting spiritual muscle on you so that while you're going through tribulation, something is being activated. You are being fashioned, sculpted, framed in the Spirit of God with what? It produces perseverance, and then perseverance does what? It produces character and character hope. And now hope does not lead to disappointment. Somebody needs to hear it tonight. Hope does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given. See, what I'm confident of is that God is actually doing something far greater than all of us are even aware of. God is working and building in such a way, and we're about to see the revelation of it. It's coming to a precipice. This word perseverance is so powerful. The word that Paul uses for per- perseverance, it means this. It means having the, the capacity or the ability. Hear this. If you have perseverance, you have the ability or you have the capacity to bear up under very difficult obstacles and circumstances. But perseverance is not just about the ability to survive. Perseverance is about the Spirit of God becoming weightier and more powerful because it's being developed in you. While you're waging a good warfare, again, God is building you and it's producing perseverance. And this perseverance, it will actually produce in you the very character of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. It's powerful. God is building you. God is making you a man who is tried and true. God is making you a woman who is tried and true. God, you got to hear this tonight. God is making you somebody who is embodied truth. God is making you a person who is embodied wisdom. Gold that that has been tried in the fire. That has been refined in the fire. So that God has proven you to be a vessel of honor. So that God has proven that you are a vessel of honor and a vessel of the glory of God. He's proving us in the fire. There's something going on with the ecclesia in the earth, in these fiery trials, in the difficulty. God is putting on spiritual heavy weight. Power. Why? Because we are going to overcome principalities, powers, rulers, thrones in these last days. You would have never been able to, to bear up under such a weightiness unless you would have persevered through tribulation. Galatians 6, 9, don't grow weary in doing good. Amen, church? Don't grow weary in doing good. For in due season, we're going to reap if we don't lose heart. We're going to reap if we don't lose heart. Guys, don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. It's not time to lose heart. Hebrews 12, 12 says, therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 21, it says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Look at it. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. I'm going to close in just the next few minutes here. Stay with me, please. Hebrews chapter 10 tonight, I felt this was so important. In verse 23, it says, let us hold fast to our confession of hope without wavering, for he who is promised is faithful. Hold fast to your confession. It means in in these last days, holding fast to your confession is speak faith. Speak faith. Speak faith in this hour. That's how you overcome the enemy. You speak the word. You take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and you use that Word, and you declare the Word of the Lord, and you speak it in faith. 
to overcome him. Are you with me tonight? I want to go a few more places. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy in verse 4. And I'm going to round it. <laughs> this is what he said in verse 7. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have kept the faith. I have fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. This is a big point here. You have to understand that fighting the good fight, finishing the race, keeping the faith, they're not three things. They're one thing all in all. Why do I say it that way? Because you can't get two of them right and get one of them wrong. You can't get two of them right and get one of them wrong. They're all intertwined like a three-chord strand, like a three-chord strand. He goes, you have to fight the good fight. Guys, we have to fight a good fight. You have to fight a good fight. See, and in and, and the church, there's been so much pandering teaching in the body of Christ that people aren't, they're just not used to being told, hey, you've got to put on the full armor of God and you've got to wage a good warfare and you've got to fight and you've got to overcome in this hour. Our ultimate victory in overcoming is coming when the King of glory comes. But until that day, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to fight for victory. So fight the good fight and finish the race and keep the faith. I don't want to go, I don't want to travel down the road far and long tonight, but what we are seeing with, with many in the body of Christ that seemingly who have, have been fathers in the faith, fathers in the faith, decades of ministry. And now what is happening, folks, the day of exposure, it's necessary. I say this in the fear of the Lord. It's necessary. God is going to have a clean bride. He's going to have a pure church for his son. We've got to keep the faith. Guys, we've got to finish this strong. We've got to finish well. Fantastic. You've served the Lord for five years. Fantastic. You've been in the kingdom. You've served the Lord for a decade, two decades, three decades. I want to charge you tonight. You've got to finish strong. There are leaders right now. Brent knows who I'm thinking, of, uh, thinking about. There are leaders right now that we are praying for and interceding. We've got to see them finish strong in this hour. God's serious about it, folks. He's serious about it. Hebrews chapter 10, and I believe this is where we're going to close tonight. In verse 36, it says, You have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. We have need of endurance. We have need of endurance. Father, tonight I thank you that the ministry of your Holy Spirit is filling your church. You're filling your church, Lord. You're cleaning your church. And I speak the anointing for endurance and perseverance and the anointing for victory. The anointing to overcome in this hour. Lord, that these men and women of God, they would wage a good warfare. They would put on the full armor of God, and they would wage spiritual battle. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you that our weapons, they are not carnal, but mighty, mighty to the pulling down of any stronghold and every stronghold that dares to defy the knowledge of God. And I thank you that you have armed us with these weapons of warfare. I speak strength to your people. I speak strength to your people tonight. I speak fresh anointing and fresh oil to be poured tonight upon the heads of your men and your women. God, I pray that you would, you would purify your church 
You would clean your church, your bride. You would go deep. You would go to the core. And you would provide for your son a bride that is beautiful and holy without blemish and without wrinkle. A bride that hates sin and fears the Lord. A bride that fears the Lord. I want you to stand to your feet tonight if you would. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Let hope arise tonight, Lord. Let hope arise in these overcomers, Lord. Overcomers. Overcomers. I thank you that there's been fresh oil, Lord, being poured upon us tonight. The oil of refreshing. The oil of strength and the oil of encouragement tonight. I thank you, Lord, that your word is alive and it is quickening us. Your word is alive and your word is truth. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are building the church. You are building men and you are building women. Hallelujah. Tonight, we're going to pray for everyone that desires prayer. In the next few minutes, we're going to open the altars, and I want our, our prayer team to prepare themselves. We've come ready to pray for you. These are sacred moments. These are sacred moments in the altar. I want our worship team to just prepare themselves and come and join me right now. Not our worship team, our prayer team. Our prayer team. Join us tonight. For any reason that you would need prayer this evening, you need a miracle in your body, you need a healing in your body, we want to pray for you. You need a breakthrough in any realm of your life, we want to pray and intercede with you tonight. We're going to see breakthroughs in this place. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands across the room tonight. Father, I thank you for the victorious ones. I thank you, God. I thank you for the soldiers. I thank you, God. I thank you for these mighty ones, God, that you are building. Mighty men and women of God. Strengthen them tonight, God. May they go forth in victory this week. May they triumph this week. And Lord, I pray even now as we move into this altar time that breakthroughs come forth by the Spirit of God. I pray it in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. We love you, Victory. You need prayer. Come tonight. Good night, everyone.